Hi everyone, it's Nadia from Yarn Utopia. Today we are making this beautiful purse. It's the Poppin' Petals purse and I absolutely love it. We are using popcorn stitches, my absolute favorite stitch in the whole crochet uh, stitching. And then we are also, uh, we're making these petals and we are using different media today. We're using um, rings, we're using cord, uh, we're using embellishments, buttons, and all that good stuff so I'll get right into all the supplies and then I'll answer some frequently asked questions and then we can get right into making this beautiful piece so the supplies we are going to need are a crochet hook that is a size G6 which is 4.25 millimeters if you can see there it is and then um, we you can use you know a bigger or smaller hook I wouldn't really recommend much smaller than this uh, but you can go up to an H size hook which is five millimeters if you want to instead but you make sure you have your G6 hook we are also going to use a scissor and a yarn needle those are just tools to use uh, when we cut our yarn and sew in our ends and we're going to be doing a lot of that a lot of sewing in this project I used um, stitch markers, I just used these two extra strands of yarn for stitch markers, uh, but you can use legit stitch markers if you have those like plastic or metal ones, but I'm just using strands of yarn from previous like scrap projects or whatever. Then we're going to need two of these rings, these are macrame rings, uh, you could use embroidery hoop rings or any type of ring, or instead of rings you could use rope. Or you can use um, a cord or a wire. I actually have wire here, a cable wire, that I am also going to be using uh, for the handles. And um, at the bottom of our bag here, you can see across here, there is a cord that goes across the bottom. But our handles are made with the cord, and then the side part here is made with the rings. So you can decide if you want to use these. Um, you don't have to. We can also work this part without rings, uh, and I do show that in the video, how to attach just this flower to the side of your bag without a ring. So you can do that as well. Uh, but I am going to be using these macrame rings. This is a five inch ring, okay, five inches across, which is, I'll tell you in centimeters, 13 centimeters. So uh, you can use a bigger or smaller one as well. Um, you want two of those, one for each side, just like that. And you can um, make bigger or smaller. I tell you how to increase uh, the back of this part here to make it wider as well. So you can make it even bigger if you want. So those are, that's the supplies. Also this uh, cord I have, this is a cable cord um, that is just a bad cord that I had, but you can use uh, a wire, you can use a rope like I said, um, or like you could cut if you have like a, if you have a ring and you want to use, you know, these rings for the handles, you could totally use that as well, you know, uh, way up here, just attach some type of handle we're going to be using. And you don't even have to make these handles, you can use flat handles, like you can just uh, crochet rows and make rose handles, and then also we're going to need a button. You can have, you can make a button, or you can get uh, buttons somewhere at the craft store. I got this specific button at the Etsy shop, would be fancy. I'll put the link in the description of this video. Shameless plug. So if you can check out that uh, Etsy shop, you can get wood buttons there and any wood items. And so we're making this uh, closure here with a button closure, and then you can see the inside of the bag like that. So it's really deep, really nice inside. It's perfect for fitting a whole skein of yarn in there. Look at that. Speaking of yarn, the yarn we're going to use is Red Heart Super Saver. So this is um, the color, my main color that I'm using. And this is, let's see here, 202 yards. And I used three of these. So three times two is six. So six over, I guess 600 yards, a little over 600 yards I used for this project. So make sure that you get three of these skeins. Uh, you will have, you know, a little bit left over, but not much. So uh, just keep that in mind when you're getting your yarn. If you're not going to use the same kind of yarn, this is a worsted weight size four medium. You could use a double knitting yarn if you can't get uh, this type of yarn, you know, a Caron Simply Soft or a, um, I don't know, a 
Bernat uh, type of yarn or um, I love this yarn. A lot, a lot of people like I love this yarn <laughs> type of brand. But this is just a worsted weight medium. Red Heart Super Saver Accent. My color I used is Coral. So I used three skeins of the Coral. And then uh, if you are working on, if you want to go on to work the tassel, this extra tassel here is just an accent piece. I just used scrap yarn. You can see here I used um, this light purple color. That's a Red Heart Super Saver, just scraps that I had lying around. And then this accent uh, variegated color is Gumball by Bill Village Yarns. And this one has the color cinnamon. So uh, if you wanted to find this specific yarn to use this specific color combination, you can totally do that. But I uh, recommend using just one main color and then uh, a variegated part for this part of the tassel um, and then an accent color that matches with the uh, variegated color. So that's just an embellishment though. You don't have to do that, but this is um, you can make this in any color. I mean, even if you made this main part, the whole body part in a variegated color, that would look so fabulous. So really you can make this your own. Also, I really like the pop and look of this. If I put my hand in here and pop this out, if you have a lot of stuff inside, you can pop out your sides and look at that. That's why it's the pop and petals. Hello. So fabulous. So I love how this looks and uh, those are all the supplies we need. Also I do want to mention uh, frequently asked questions I usually get is how big is this measure. So let's measure this on camera. From one side, one ring to the other is about 11 inches. Okay, obviously it goes further if you popped out those petals. So let's see, about 15 inches which is about 37 centimeters, okay? But with this, just the rings inside is about 28 centimeters, okay? That's across the bottom. Then the top, let's see, across the top here, measures about 24 centimeters, which is about 10 inches, I think. Yep, just about 10 inches, okay? My handles around uh, measure about 10 inches. Okay, but I did go a little bit bigger because we go, we sew them in down beneath, okay, down a little bit lower. So they're about 12 inches actually. And then I went down an inch on each side. Okay, and we need to make two of those. Okay, and then let's see here, the length of mine. Now, obviously you can make yours bigger or smaller, um, but the length of mine is about, well, from the top to the bottom is about nine inches, almost 10 inches. And that is in centimeters, about 24 centimeters, okay? So those are approximate uh, measurements and that is what mine came out to look like and that's how big it is. It's, it's very, I mean, pretty big enough to be a purse. I mean, you can use this for yarn or you can use this on the, at, you know, at the market. You can put a whole skein of yarn in there and a hook and be on your way. Look at how fabulous that is. So that is a lot of the frequently asked questions I get. If you, you know, have any other questions about this project, be sure to check out the links in the description of this video. There will be a link to my blog, yarnutopia.com, where you will get the written pattern for this along with all the questions in the notes section and the materials you need. I will list all of these materials in the materials section of the post. So make sure you check out those links to the blog and I will get all that up for you to follow along. Also, there are other links in the description of this video. So there's a link to my, like I said, my blog where you'll get the written pattern, but there's also a link to my Facebook and Instagram. Make sure to follow me on both platforms. And also, uh, if you post, if you make this big, I have to, have to, have to see it. It is so fabulous. So make sure to hashtag uh, Yarn Utopia so I can see your work. I can go double tap your photos. Make sure they're public though on Instagram so that I can definitely 
actually see them because if I'm not following you then I won't be able to see them if your photos are private. Also, uh, make sure to uh, follow me on Facebook and share your photos on there and you can go to the others post or the visitors posts or whatever it's called on Facebook and you can see what other people are making, get inspiration for your next project. So our community is growing so fast, it's so fabulous, you guys are awesome. Also, one last thing I want to mention, uh, please uh, give my dad a big thank you, give him a comment. He is our videographer, editor, and photographer for all of our videos, so I have to say a huge thank you to him for doing this video with us, making it, filming it, editing it, and posting it for us. So make sure you subscribe to our channel on YouTube, and so you'll get the update on when he posts our next video. And if you have a chance, go to our channel on YouTube, and on the right hand side, if you just scroll down a little bit, there's a blue button it says support make sure to click that and support us in any way you can so that we can keep bringing you fantastic crochet tutorials because this is a lot of work and um, if you can support us we can definitely continue making these videos so let's get into this beautiful pop and petals purse we're gonna start by making the flower sides first. So let's start with a slip knot. Put your short end over the top of your long end and then fold this down and pull your long end through that loop and pull tight. Then insert your hook and we can start. So to start off, let's chain two. So yarn over and pull through one and two. And then in the second chain from the hook, we are going to put seven single crochet. So the loop on the hook doesn't count. So we're gonna count one and two right in this chain here. We're going to insert our hook, yarn over and pull through, and then yarn over and pull through both loops on your hook. Okay, that's a single crochet. So we have to make seven of those. So that was one. Insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two loops. That's two. Go back into that same chain, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two loops. That's three. Go back in, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. That's four. This is five, six, and seven. All right, so once you come back around, you want to count back seven and you want to slip stitch to the beginning single crochet. So go right into that first single crochet, yarn over, pull through, and through. And that was round one. Going right into round number two, I'm going to chain up one, so yarn over, pull through, and now we're going to put two single crochet into each stitch around for a total of 14 single crochets. So go into the same stitch that we just slip stitched into, go in, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two loops. And again, go back into that same stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two loops. Okay, so there's two single crochet in that first stitch. Then hop to the next stitch and put two single crochet in there. So one and two, and in each stitch around. So just do that, you should have 14 single crochet and then I'll meet you up and we'll go on to round three. All right, once you come back around, we want to slip stitch to the first single crochet of this round. So if you need to, count back 14, go into this first single crochet, yarn over, pull through, and through. Now for round number three, we're going to make our petals for the first layer. So what we're going to do is chain up one, so yarn over, pull through, one, and then in the, the next stitch, so not in the stitch that we just slip stitched into, but actually in this next stitch right here, we are going to put four double crochets. So yarn over, go into the next stitch right there, yarn over and pull through, then yarn over and pull through two loops on your hook, and then yarn over and pull through those last two loops on your hook. Okay, that's a double crochet. So again, yarn over, go back into that same stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through two loops, and then yarn over and pull through two loops. So that's two, yarn over, go in, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two loops, and yarn over and pull through two loops. So that's three, and one more. So yarn over, go in, yarn over, pull through, 
yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two. So that's four. Four double crochets in there. Then in this very next stitch right here, we're going to put a slip stitch. So go into the next stitch, yarn over and pull through and through. Just like that. So there's our first petal. So now we're just going to repeat. So in this next stitch right here, we are going to put four double crochets. So yarn over, go in, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, go in, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Again, for number three and number four. Okay, and then we're going to slip stitch into the next stitch right here. So go in, yarn over, pull through, and through. Okay, and then we're just going to repeat. So put four double crochets in the next stitch and then slip stitch into the next stitch. And just repeat that around until you have seven petals. And then I'll meet you up and we'll go on to round four. All right, when you come back around and make your last petal, we need to slip stitch somewhere to finish off this last petal. So I'm gonna go into this beginning uh, chain up one right there, if you can see it. You could slip stitch into this slip stitch right here too, um, wherever you really feel comfortable going in. So I'm just, I'm gonna go, I think right into this stitch right back here. If your hook will fit, there you go. Insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, and through that loop on your hook, and pull tight. So there is our first layer. You could fasten off here and have a cute little flower applique for something. It'd be cute to put a little button in there or something cute for um, like a headband or something. So, but we're gonna go on to the next round. We're going to make this layered. So what I'm going to do is continue with this color. If you want to change color, you can. Uh, just uh, fasten this off and then start in the back of this petal here where I'm gonna show you. But if you're not changing color, just chain one and then follow along here, we're going to, so we're looking at our flower like this, this is the front. We're going to turn this over, folding it toward us, just like that. And now we're going to work into these back loops of these double crochets right here, okay? So you can see here there's these um, bottom loops underneath. And you can see here there's a one, two, three and four double crochets right there, okay? We're gonna work in the two center ones right here and we're going to go underneath this loop and this loop. Oops, this loop and this loop right here, okay? And we're gonna make our slip stitches in the center of our petals, okay? So what we're going to do is hop over here, go into this piece, into this petal, right back here, okay? If you can get under both loops, that's perfect. If you can only get under one, that's okay too. Then we're going to slip stitch. So yarn over and pull through and pull through. Okay, just like that. So now we are going to chain three. So yarn over, pull through, one, two, and three. And we're gonna hop over to the next petal back here. And we're going to slip stitch in that center in those loops. So in the bottom of our double crochets, there are loops. We're going to go underneath those, then yarn over and pull through and pull through the loop on your hook for a slip stitch. Then chain three, one, two, three. Hop to the next petal and repeat. So just slip stitch into the back of this here, under this loop and this loop, okay, just like that. Yarn over, pull through, and pull through. And then chain three, one, two, three. Then hop to the next petal and just slip stitch, and do that all the way around until you have your uh, seven chain three spaces, and then I'll meet you up, and then we'll go on to the next round together. All right, when you're making your last chain three space, you want to slip stitch to the beginning slip stitch of this round. So right here, we're going to go in to the slip stitch, then yarn over and pull through and through. 
Okay? Now at this point, if you are changing color, you can fasten off and start in any chain three space. I'm just gonna slip stitch right into this chain three space. I'm not changing color. So yarn over, pull through and through. And now we are going to put six double crochets into this chain three space. So yarn over, go into the same chain three space, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two loops, Oh, two loops, there we go, and then yarn over and pull through two loops. Okay, again, yarn over, go in, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So that's two, this is three, four, five, and six, and then we want to slip stitch into the same space. So go in to the same space, yarn over, pull through, and through. Okay, and then there's your petal. So now we're going to hop to the next chain three space. If you need to fold these petals down so you can see your space, slip stitch in there, and then make six double crochets in that space, and then make another slip stitch in there. Okay, so this round is super simple, just doing six double crochets, slip stitch into the next space, then six double crochets, and then slip stitch into the same space. Okay, so I have six double crochets. I'm gonna slip stitch in here. If you need to, scoot these over so you have room to slip stitch. Go in, yarn over, pull through and through. And then just repeat. So go into the next chain three space here, slip stitch in there, and then make six double crochets. Then slip stitch again in there, and then hop to the next. So just repeat that all the way around until you have seven petals and then I'll meet you up. And then we're gonna go on to round six. All right, we want to slip stitch into the space here and then we just finished our um, round. We want to slip stitch to the beginning slip stitch of this round. So if you can go in here, go in, yarn over, pull through and pull through. At this point, it's a really pretty two-layered flower. You could totally fasten off and have a cute little flower applique for something else, but I need to make one more layer of petals. So what I'm going to do is kind of repeat what we did uh, for uh, round four, but um, we're gonna go on to round six. So what I'm going to do is chain one. I'm going to slip stitch into the center back. So I'm turning this forward toward me so I can look at the back of our petals here. And the center two double crochets right here, I'm going to go under at the base of them and I'm going to make a slip stitch in two loops. So I see this one loop and this one loop. And I'm going to yarn over and pull through and pull through. Then I'm going to chain four. So yarn over, pull through, one, two, three, and four. Then I'm going to hop to the next petal way over here. You can spread these apart so you can see that there are two double crochets in the center here. I'm going to go underneath this loop and this loop, okay, at the base of the double crochets. Yarn over, pull through, and pull through that loop on the hook for a slip stitch. And then chain four. One, two, three, and four. And then hop to the next petal and just repeat. So you can spread these apart so you can see your double crochets. Go to the base of them at the bottom here or wherever you can fit your hook basically and make a slip stitch. Okay, then chain four. One, two, three, four. And then hop to the next petal and repeat. So slip stitch into the back of the petal and then chain four. Okay, so I'm gonna do that all the way around. You'll have seven chain four spaces at the end of this round, and then I'll, I'll meet you up and we'll go on to round eight. Haha, <laughs> just kidding, it's round seven. So I'm already back around here and uh, we want to slip stitch to the beginning here. This beginning, you can do the chain one or the slip stitch, wherever you feel comfortable, just slip stitch somewhere back here. I'm just going to go in this space, okay? 
And now this is what it should look like. So now we're going to go on to round seven. We're going to slip stitch into this chain four space. If you want to change color, you can just to fasten off here and start in any chain four space. But I'm going to slip stitch in here. So yarn over, pull through and through. And now we are going to make, let's see here, round seven, seven double crochets. So yarn over, go in, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two loops, and yarn over and pull through two loops. So that's one, this is two, three, four, five, six, and seven and then we're going to slip stitch into that same space so you need to maybe scoot these over a little bit and go into the space yarn over pull through and through then slip stitch into the next chain four space so go in yarn over pull through and through and then make your seven double crochets in there and then slip stitch again in there and just repeat that so it's basically uh, repeating what we did for round five except we're doing it with seven double crochets instead of six so just repeat that all the way around and then I'll meet you up and let's see here we are going to actually fasten off this part and start making the back all right I'm just finishing my last petal here and now we are going to slip stitch back in there and then to fasten off, I'm going to slip stitch to the beginning. You can slip stitch to the beginning, slip stitch if you'd like, or the chain one or wherever you have. If you did chain one, I don't think there was a chain one in there, but wherever, slip stitch to the beginning. Then you have a lovely three layered flower that looks really cool. Yeah, so you can fasten off here, have a nice three layered flower for something. Uh, as an applique or you can you know embellish something else but I want to make this back all closed up so what I'm going to do is fasten off here so chain one cut this yarn and continue to pull it through pull tight I'm just gonna sew in that end real quick uh, just because I don't want it in my way while I'm crocheting this next round so I'm just gonna yarn my needle and go underneath these stitches real quick just like that and behind here Okay, and then I'm going to cut this there. All right, lovely. Now what we're going to do, you're looking at your flower like this. We're going to turn it toward us like this. So you can see here after the first layer of flowers, you can see, or the first layer of petals, I guess you can see these, uh, sp these spaces here. Okay. We're going to be working around these slip stitches. Okay, so what we need to do is grab our yarn. So we're gonna go, I'm gonna go right in here. So we're gonna do the one toward, toward us. So go into this side, around this piece to this side, hook on your yarn. I'm just gonna use the same color. You can use a different color if you'd like. Pull that through and then chain up one to secure it, okay? Now we are going to, that's going to count as our slip stitch um, for this part here, but we're going to chain three, one, two, and three. And now we're going to hop to, oh, you know what? I attached it to the wrong part. I said the inside, guys. Sorry, I meant the inside. So we're going to go in here. Okay, you can go back here. I mean, it's totally fine. You can go way, way up here, but I meant the first layer. So right in here. Okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> We're going to attach the yarn, pull it through, and then chain. Okay, so now chain four. One, two, three, and four. And now we're going to hop to the next one. If you can see, move the straggler here. This next one is right here. Okay, we're going to go in from this side around it, then yarn over and pull through and pull through that loop on your hook. Okay, so there's a chain three space right there. Then we're gonna chain three, one, two, three. And then we're gonna hop to the next one, which is right here. We're gonna go in from this side to this side. Okay, and then yarn over and pull through and pull through the loop on your hook. 
then chain three, one, two, three, hop to the next one right here. Okay, so sorry about that mess up there. I wanted to go in the first, after the first layer of petals. So between the first and second layer of petals, we're going to be making these. So then chain three, hop to the next one, slip stitch right here, yarn over, pull through and through. Chain three, one, two, three. And regardless if you're doing the same color or not, nobody's gonna see this, so you could change color if you wanted to, but I didn't, so. Then chain three, one, two, three. And this last one here, slip stitch. And now chain three, one, two, three. And now we're back to the beginning, so we're going to slip stitch to the first chain of our chain up four here. So this very beginning, we're going to go in to there, yarn over, pull through, and pull through. Okay, so that's what it should look like. We have our seven chain three spaces around. So now we're going to work into those chain three spaces. So you can slip stitch into this chain three space right here. Okay, and we can go into or onto round nine. We're going to chain up one, and we're gonna put three single crochet into each chain three space around. So go in, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two loops. Okay, that's single crochet. So again, go in, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two loops. And again, go in, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two loops. Now hop to the next chain three space right here, Okay, like I'm doing, you can fold these petals forward so you can see the chain three space. We're going in, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Again, go in, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, and again for a third single crochet. So you wanna put three single crochets into each chain three space around for a total of 21 single crochets around. So I'll meet you up when I have my 21 single crochets and we will go on to round 10. Alright, going on to round 10, we do not want to attach, actually. We are going to work in continuous spiral, so I'm going to get a, another piece of yarn here, another color, and I'm going to use it as a stitch marker in here. Okay, you can use a legit stitch marker or put um, some piece of yarn in here to mark your stitches. You need to count back 21 and it's going to give you this first single crochet right here. And we're going to work the next round right into there. So I'm going to work uh, for round 10, we need to put two single crochet in this next stitch and then uh, one single crochet in the next two stitches. So go into this first single crochet. And then, so we're working in a continuous spiral now, okay? So yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two loops. Okay, so we just single crocheted in that first stitch. And now we need to do it again, so go back into that same stitch, yarn over, pull through, and then yarn over and pull through two loops. Okay, so there's two single crochet in there. Now we just need to put one single crochet in the next two stitches. So one and one. And then we're going to repeat that around Okay, so we're going to have a total of 28 single crochet at the end of this round, so we're doing an increase. So two single crochet in the next stitch, one and two, and then one single crochet in the next two stitches. So one and one. And repeat, so two single crochet in the next stitch, and then one single crochet in the next two stitches and repeat. So do that all the way around. Like I said, you'll have 28 single crochet at the end of this round, and then I'll meet you up and we'll go on to round 11. Okay, finishing up round 10 here. Just got to put my last single crochet in here. And now we want to move our stitch marker up. Okay, and now this next round, uh, round 11, we want to put two single crochet in the next stitch and then one single crochet in the next three stitches this time, and then repeat that around, okay? So in this next stitch here, it's behind my stitch marker, but you can see here, there's that stitch. Put two single crochet in that first stitch, so one and two, and then one single crochet in the next three stitches, so one, two, and three. 
Okay, and then repeat. So put two single crochet in the next stitch, one and two, both in that same stitch, and then one single crochet in the next three stitches. One, two, three. And again, two single crochet in the next stitch, and then one single crochet in the next three stitches. So just repeat that around. At the end of this round, you'll have 35 single crochet. So I'll meet you up and we'll go on to round 12. All right, I just finished up this round here. Going on to round 12, I'm going to move my stitch marker up. And now for round 12, we're going to put two single crochet in this next stitch and then one single crochet in the next four stitches this time. So go in this first stitch and put two single crochets one and two and then one single crochet in the next four stitches this round so one two three and four and then repeat so put two single crochets in the next stitch one and two and then one single crochet in the next four stitches one two three and four and then repeat. So do that all the way around and then we will have 42 single crochet at the end of round 12. So I'll meet you up and we'll go on to round 13. All right, going on to round 13, I'm going to put uh, my stitch marker up and then we are going to put two single crochet in the next stitch and one single crochet in, you guessed it, five stitches this round. So you can kind of get the increase going here. So we're going to put two in this next stitch and then one single crochet in the next five stitches. So here's one two, three, four, five, and then we're going to put uh, two single crochets in the next stitch, one and two, and then one single crochet in the next five stitches, and just repeat that all the way around. You'll have a total of 49 single crochet at the end of this round, so then I'll meet you up and we'll go on to round 14. All right, I have my 49 single crochet, so now I'm going to move the stitch marker up one, and going on to round 14, we are going to put two single crochet in the first stitch, and then one single crochet in the next six stitches, okay? So I'll put two in here, one and two, and then one single crochet in the next six stitches. One, two, three, four, five, and six, and then repeat. So put two single crochet in the next stitch, and then one single crochet in the next six stitches, and then repeat. So two single crochet in the next stitch, one single crochet in the next six stitches. At the end of round 14, we will have 56 single crochet. So then I'll meet you up and we'll go on to our last increase round, number 15. All right, moving my stitch marker up, going on to round 15 here. So I have my 56 single crochet. At this point, if yours uh, fits around this ring, if you want to test it out, set it inside there and make sure that it does fit around your ring, you could end here and just hop to, um, you know, attaching this to the ring. But I want to do one more increase round, okay? So I'm going to put two single crochet in the next stitch and then one single crochet in the next seven stitches, okay? So I move my stitch marker up. Going in this first stitch here, we're putting two single crochets, one and two, and then one single crochet in the next seven stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then we're going to repeat. So put two single crochets in this next stitch. 
one and two and then one single crochet in the next seven stitches at the end of round 15 you'll have 63 single crochets if you just continue working this pattern two single crochet in the next one single crochet in the next seven and then I'll show you how to attach it to that ring all right so now I have my 63 single crochet so I'm going to remove my stitch marker and then we are going to slip stitch into this very next stitch right here so go in yarn over pull through and through now if you're not using a ring and you're, you can just skip the next section you can fasten this off cut this and continue to pull this through and then uh, you can have that and just rewind this and make one more of these uh, to uh, have for the other side of your purse. Uh, but I'm going to attach this to a ring so if you have a ring or a cord or some type of rope or anything you want to uh, have this uh, round you can follow along here. What we're going to do is I'm going to remove my hook from here. I'm going to set this down. I'm going to take my ring and put it over the top of it just like that. Then I'm going to pull this through Okay, so now the yarn that's going to my ball of yarn is underneath it, okay? And now I'm going to put my hook back into this loop here, and now I'm going to yarn over and pull that through the loop, okay? And you can kind of pull it tight, make sure it's secure around this, just like that. And now we're going to single crochet into each stitch around working around this uh, ring here. So go into this next stitch, or you can go into the stitch we just uh, slip stitched into. We're going to go in, then yarn over back here, and then yarn over, pull through that, okay? Then yarn over and pull through two loops, okay? That's our extended single crochet. So again, go way down into this next stitch on our piece, wrap around the ring, so yarn over, pull through, and then yarn over and pull through two loops. Okay, just like that. We'll be using these single crochets that we're making later on when we attach our pieces uh, and sew our pieces together, but go into the next stitch, yarn over and pull that through, pull up, yarn over and pull through two loops okay and we're just going to single crochet in each stitch all the way around so no increasing on this round we're just single crocheting in each stitch working around the ring or like I said if you have a cord or a rope or something to work around you can do that and then once I am back around to the other side uh, finishing this round I'll meet you up and I'll show you how to fasten off Alright, when you come back around, you want to slip stitch to the beginning, so I just single crocheted all the way around. You can slip stitch to the beginning single crochet or this uh, little chain up here, wherever, really. Just insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, and pull through the loop on your hook. And now to fasten off, let me get through this loop here, there we go. To fasten off, we're going to chain one. And then you want to cut your yarn. I've already cut mine here. And then we're just going to continue to pull this all the way through and pull that tight. Okay, just like that. So there you have it. It's attached to your ring. So this is what it looks like. Really cool. Uh, we're going. I'm, mine's kind of stretchy because if I put a lot of stuff in my bag, I kind of want it to stretch out, kind of poke out, and have a cool 3D effect on it. So that's mine. Um, now if you need to just rewind this whole part and make one more of these uh, pieces so i did one off camera i have here so now we have two of these and now these are going to be each side of your purse okay so it's going to go like this and then our purse middle we're going to make next so follow along you're going to set these aside once you have these both made exactly the same um, once you have them both done then follow along to this next part and we'll make the body of our purse all right, one thing I did want to mention before we start this next part of making the body of the purse is that these petals kind of came up for me a little bit. So what I ended up doing is just weaving in uh, and sewing these in on this side 
um, you can't really see but you can see here I sewed in a ground this whole round and then I sewed down this last row of petals just to kind of keep them down that's just personal preference that's like creator's choice if you wanted more of a 3d flower and have it poking out and up then you didn't have to do that but I just sewed them in just wove it in and out in and out of these uh, stitches and of these layers here and kind of um, sewed down those but again that was just my preference that's what something that I did that I like to do but if you didn't want to do that you can have yours kind of be more 3D. But I kind of just tacked these petals down and it was just a little bit of a tip for if you wanted yours to be more flat against this base here. So that's that. So let's go right into making the body of our purse. So what we need to do, I'm going to set these aside and grab this yarn and my hook. We're going to start off by making a slip knot. So like I showed you in the beginning of this video, put your short end over your long end, fold this down and pull that through, pull tight, insert your hook, and we can start. So to start off, we're going to chain 36. So yarn over and pull through, one, yarn over, pull through, two, yarn over, pull through, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You could, you know, chain any multiple of five plus one. So I'm chaining 35 plus one is 36. Uh, you can chain as much as you want, but I'm chaining 36. I won't make you watch me do all 36, but uh, just chain as many as you need. Like I said, a multiple of five plus one, and I'll meet you up when I have my 36 chains. All right, when you're finished, this is what your chain should look like. And now this is the width of your um, bag. Okay, so this is how wide mine is going to be approximately nine and a half inches wide. Okay, that is about 25 centimeters okay so that's how wide mine is going to be like i said you can make yours bigger or smaller totally up to you but now from the second chain from the hook and across we are going to single crochet across this chain so what i like to do uh, is turn my uh, work toward me so you can see the chain like this but i like to turn it toward me like this and you can see these back ridges here I like to work in those back ridges, but you could work in the top loop right up here or through both of these loops, front and back loops. It's really up to you what you like to do, but I'm going to work in the back ridges and we want to single crochet in the second chain from the hook. So the loop on the hook doesn't count. So count one and two right in here. I'm going to turn my work, go in that back ridge like that, then yarn over and pull through and then yarn over and pull through two loops. Okay, that's a single crochet. So now we're gonna go into the back ridge of the next stitch or the next chain right here, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two loops. Okay, and we're just gonna do that all the way across in each chain across, go in, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Okay, next stitch in, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. So just single crochet all the way across this row and then I'll meet you up and we'll go on to row two. All right, just finishing up right here is my last single crochet on this row and now we can go on to row two. So for row two, we need to chain up three, one, two, and three and we're gonna turn our work. So now we're gonna turn this around here and work this way. And in this same stitch that we just chained up three and you can see right here, we're going to work our beginning popcorn stitch in there. And what a beginning popcorn stitch is, is four double crochets into the same stitch of our chain up three. So yarn over, go into the same stitch, yarn over and pull through, yarn over and pull through two loops, and then yarn over and pull through two loops. Okay, that's a double crochet. So we had to put four, so that was one. So yarn over, go back in, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. 
again, yarn over, go in, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two, and one more double crochet in that same stitch. Now to finish off this popcorn stitch, we're going to pull up this loop and remove our hook. We're going to go into this chain up three right here, insert your hook, okay, in the front and back loop there, put that loop back on your hook, and pull it all the way through just like that and pull it tight so you can see that it is folded in half and it looks like a popcorn stitch okay so that's our beginning popcorn our beginning popcorn because we had to chain up three in the beginning so now in this next step we are going to double crochet in the next stitch so yarn over go into this next stitch okay go in yarn over pull through yarn over pull through two loops and then yarn over and pull through two loops okay and then we're just going to alternate these two stitches all the way across so in this very next stitch we're going to popcorn a regular popcorn stitch is five double crochets in the stitch so in this next stitch we're going to put five double crochets so one two three, four, and five. Okay, and then we're going to remove our hook from this loop. I kind of pulled that up a little bit to remove my hook. We're going to go in, we're going to count back five. So one, two, three, four, five, go into that fifth one right there. Put your hook on that, or put that loop on your hook, I guess. Put your, pull that tight and then pull that through and that folds in half just like that popcorn okay don't go in this double crochet right there because um, that we need that stitch <laughs> so now double crochet in the next stitch so yarn over go into the next stitch and just double crochet and put one in there okay and this is how it's gonna look just like that so in the next stitch we're gonna put our popcorn stitch so that's five double crochets. One, two, three, four, and five. Then pull that loop up, remove your hook, count back five stitches. One, two, three, four, five. Go into this first one here, hook that back on your hook and pull that through and pull it tight. And there's your next popcorn. Then we're just going to put a regular double crochet in the next stitch okay so we're alternating these two stitches all the way across so a popcorn and then a double crochet so a popcorn stitch in this next stitch and then a double crochet in the next stitch and then a popcorn stitch in the next stitch and a double crochet in the next stitch at the end of this row i'll meet you up and we will end this row with a popcorn stitch so then i'll meet you up when i'm finishing my last popcorn stitch on this row and we'll go on to uh row three all right just finishing my last two stitches here like i said we're gonna finish with a popcorn stitch so we gotta put five double crochets in this last one one two three oops four and five and then we're going to remove our hook go into the first one put that loop back on the hook and pull that through okay now your round might be a little twisted so you can easily just untwist that and that's how it should look looks really cool all those popcorns woohoo so now we're gonna go into the next row we're gonna chain up one and then we're gonna turn our work so now we're looking at this side of our work and we're just gonna single crochet across here since I have 35 stitches uh, you should have you know any multiple of five whatever however many you made at the beginning just to have the same amount as your beginning so I have 35 stitches across so you want to go in this first popcorn stitch right here okay just go in yarn over pull through yarn over pull through two loops okay then into this double crochet right here go in yarn over pull through yarn over pull through two 
And when I say popcorn stitch, it's basically the first double crochet of that popcorn stitch. So there is a space there you can see. Go in, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Okay, and just single crochet all the way across. At the end of this row, um, I'll show you where to single crochet your last single crochet because it can get kind of tricky to see, but I'm just going to single crochet across this row, and once I have my 35 single crochet, I'll meet you up and we'll go on to row 4. Alright, and back to the side here, we want to single crochet back into this beginning, uh, this first popcorn stitch, your last single crochet should go into that popcorn stitch. So if, whether it's your chain of 3 or the actual popcorn stitch, just make sure you have your single crochet in there. And then we can go on to row 4. So chain up 3, 1, 2, 3. Switch this around, so flip your work just like that. So this is what it should look like. And now we are going to work opposite. So what I want to do is actually have my popcorn stitches uh, line up so that there's a popcorn stitch then between these two here. So right above here. And then double crochet and then popcorn between and then double crochet and popcorn between so that these line up so they're not just in rows they're actually like staggered sort of so instead of how we did it last row or last popcorn row instead of working in this stitch here we're going to go into this next stitch here so this chain of three is going to count as our first double crochet of this row so then that's basically like worked into the stitch. So now we are going to go into this next stitch and make our popcorn stitch. So we're going to put five double crochets in there. One, two, three, four, and five. Then remove our hook, go into the first double crochet of that grouping, so one, two, three, four, five, right in here. Go in, hook that back on your hook, and pull that through, and pull that tight. And then double crochet into the next stitch. Then popcorn in the next, and double crochet in the next, and double er, popcorn in the next, and double crochet in the next. So just repeat that. Basically repeating round row two, except um, we're starting this round with a double crochet and ending this round row with a double crochet. So it's um, kind of opposite, I guess, <laughs> of the stitches. So that you can see here how this one is now, like I said, lined up between these two popcorns right there, and this popcorn is lined up between these two popcorns right there. So that's how it's going to look. It's going to look fabulous. So I'm just going to work this uh, pattern, just alternating these two stitches all the way across, and then uh, at the end of this row I'll show you um, where the double crochet goes, and then we'll go on to row five. Alright, I'm just finishing up this row here, making my popcorn stitch, and then I have to finish this row with a double crochet in the last stitch. So it might be a little hidden for you, so don't forget that. Just make sure you count your stitches across, that you have 35 stitches, or however many you have um, in that multiple of 5. And there it is! It looks awesome! So now, uh, we are going to go on to row 5. We're going to chain up 1. And basically just repeat row three, so single crochet across. So single crochet in this first stitch here, okay, and then in this popcorn stitch, then this stitch, okay, all the way across we're just single crocheting. So like I said, we'll have 35 single crochets across, but um, or if you have, if you made this wider or smaller, just in your multiple of five or your original number uh, for row one, whatever you have for row one. But we're just single crocheting across and then I'll meet you up at the end of this row. Alright, just finishing up row five here. Make sure to single crochet in your beginning chain up three right here and then turn your work and now going on to row six actually row six through row 25 is a repeat of rows two through five okay so we're just going to now chain up three 
one, two, three, and popcorn in the first stitch, then double crochet in the next, then popcorn in the next, and blah de blah de blah. If you need to, uh, just rewind this to rows two through five and just repeat these rows until, actually you, you don't even have to stop at row 25. You can continue on making this as big as you want it to be, um, but I'm going to stop at row 25 and then I'm going to make uh, the top part of my bag. So um, yeah, just continue working rows two through five, just repeating those all the way across, all the way up your bag to make it as big as you want. So again, remember, this is the width of the bag. Okay, so now we're making it as tall as we want. And for sure, we definitely want it to fit around this. So from the bottom of this, we have to make it go all the way around. And then I wanna make it come up a little bit above that. But uh, you could end here. You could end, you know, just doing half of the circumference right here. And then uh, making, ending it right there and then making just like a cylinder bag. That's kind of cool idea. But I'm going to make come all the way up here and then continue up to make it tall. I want a taller bag. So I'm going to continue to work my rows as tall as I want it to be. I think I'm just going to end on row 25 and then I'll meet you up at the end of row 25 and we'll go on to the next step together. All right, I just finished row 25 and here is what it looks like. That was a lot of yarn and it's really squishy and so cute. <laughs> this is a lot of fun. I love popcorn stitches. So this is what it should look like. Um, mine turned out to be about nine inches tall. Um, yours, you know, you can make it as big and, or as tall as you want. That is, I'll tell you how many centimeters that turned out to be, about 24 centimeters or so. Well, maybe 23 centimeters. So, uh, you know, you can make yours as long as you want yours to be. You can continue to work up here and make it as tall as you want. Um, and it's depending on how wide you're making yours, I mean, you can make yours obviously from the beginning, make it wider and then taller. So this is just personal preference. So uh, this is very versatile. You can make it however you want. But now finish with round or er, row 25 here. This is the back side or this is the inside of the bag and then this is the outside of the bag we're going to go on to row 26 through 30 we are going to repeat row 25 so we're just going to chain one and then single crochet across for rows 26 27 28 29 and 30 okay so the next five rows we're just going to single crochet all the way across, then chain one, turn your work, and single crochet across, okay? So I'm just going to do that then. And then once I'm finished with that, we're going to fasten off this panel and make another one. All right, I'm just finishing on my last few stitches here. One, two, three, four, and... Okay, so now when you finish this round, or this row, we are finished. You could, you know, continue on working if you want this thicker up here. You could make it as big as you want. Just repeat those uh, rounds to make a single crochet row for your top of your purse, okay? But now to fasten off, we're just going to chain one and cut this yarn and pull that all the way through and pull it tight. Grab our yarn needle right away. Oh my goodness, I dropped my yarn needle. Let me grab that quick. Okay, sorry about that. I gotta just sew in those ends as we go. I don't like sewing in my ends at the end of my project, so I like to sew them in right away. Just take your yarn needle, yarn your needle, and just go underneath some of these stitches. Just like that. Okay, and then we're going to cut that extra, stretch that out so that's completely hidden on the inside. Okay, now rewind this and make another one of these exactly the same okay because it's going to be the other side of our purse so let me grab mine here i have one already done of course okay so this is the two pieces they're exactly the same okay so now one is going to be on one side and the other is going to be on the other side like this okay so now this is what it should look like there we go Okay, 
You know what you could, what you could do is actually <laughs> opt out of making these and just sew up these edges, sew the bottom and sew this side and have just a bag like that. That would be kind of cool. But I want to make it fancy and put these on the sides like this and then have this come up like that. Well, you can obviously can't really see it right now, but we'll make it pretty. So what we're going to do, we're going to take these two pieces line up the bottom okay like this line up the bottoms okay i'm going to crochet these single crochet these together across here now this part is optional i am going to take one part of my wire here and i'm going to crochet this into it to attach and then this will make it nice and straight and keep this from bending or making it wonky later this is optional, like I said, though. So I'm going to cut this wire here. Let me measure this out. So I just have a, a wire here, but you can use a, a rope, a cord, um, pretty much anything like a stick. But I'm just going to cut this with my scissor here because it's not that difficult. There we go. And then we're going to straighten it out, make sure it's straight. And I'm going to grab my yarn and my crochet hook. And now if you don't have a, a wire, no big deal. Just uh, we're going to attach these two pieces either way. So I'm going to go into this layer. So you can see on my foundation row, you can see these stitches here. So I'm going to go into this one and then into this one right here. Okay, I'm gonna pull my, or hook my new yarn on, pull it through and through, okay, and then chain up one, but I'm gonna put my little wire there. Okay, chain up one, okay, and then we're gonna put a single crochet into the same stitch. Now, I hope you can see this, but I'm going into the same stitch, this one, and this one from the other one there whoops we're gonna try and crochet around this wire here so yarn over pull through okay pull up yarn over and pull through two loops so crocheting around this piece this wire is kind of like how we crocheted around this here for the side thing around these rings so it's very similar to that so we're going to go into this stitch right here and into this next layer, next stitch over here. Let me get this all untangled. Okay, so you won't be able to really see that. There we go, like that. Then yarn over and pull through. Okay, and then yarn over up top here and pull through two loops. Okay, again, I'll show you. Go into the next stitch here and the next stitch here. Okay, around this piece, pull through both layers and then yarn over and pull through two loops. Okay, so we're basically crocheting this wire underneath this. If you want to, you could whip stitch this as well. You don't have to crochet it. I'm just going to crochet it. But you could whip stitch this so that you wrap around this wire. Um, you could, I don't know, I guess sew it some other way as well. But I'm just going to crochet across here just like this and have that wire stuck at the bottom there. Because I just want this to like be able to stay uh, wide, stay the way because like otherwise it would be flimsy I guess is the word I'm trying to use and it could you know like lose its nice shape so instead I'm going to use this cord or this wire here and I'm going to keep its nice shape like that then you can obviously stretch these out make sure they're at the top there and just continue all the way across. So I'm just going to continue working this single crochet in each layer. You can see I'm going both layers, but I'm also working over the top of this wire. 
Okay, and then once I finish this row, I'm going to show you how to fasten off and then we will be able to attach our rings, uh, our flower floral sides um, next. All right, I just finished single crocheting across here. So now you can see that this is what it looks like. I pushed these in on each end because I don't want it to fall off of these ends here. So um, I'm just gonna fold this so you can see that this is what it looks like on this side nicely. You can kind of see it, but you won't really see that at the um, when I finish because this is the bottom of the purse, okay? So now it's going to sit up like this like this okay so now we want to make we want to put on uh, these pieces on the sides right here and right here but we're going to attach them from the inside okay so I hope this isn't too confusing for you but we are going to what we need to do whatever size ring you have look at it from the inside here we're going to measure this so um, if you know how to do so these are five inch rings that I'm using but you can measure around yours or you can do it mathematically and measure the circumference of your circle mine should come to be about 17 inches but I'm just going to do this on camera so that you can see how big this is okay so if you want to measure it all the way around it comes to be mine comes to be about 17 inches um, but that well that is about 43 centimeters um, but depending on what size of ring you're using uh, that you want to measure that because we're going to put half on this side and half on this side okay so I guess I thought that maybe I could continue on working right here and work um, by crocheting this into it, but I think I'm going to fasten off here and start from one end and work the, the, across this piece. So chain one and cut that and continue to pull that through and pull tight. So that's attached, okay? Now, so mine measure, my ring here measures 17 inches around, okay? So half of that... Uh, will be about eight and a half inches ish eight ish inches so I'm going to measure eight inches up this side so that is from this uh, rod from this center here up to this point and then I'm going to count my rows so that was row two four six eight ten twelve fourteen sixteen eighteen row twenty it should line up with row, either row 18 or 20. I'm thinking row 18 will wrap around here. So if we want to set this on this side and then wrap this all the way around here, it should end up to row 18 at the very top of this. Okay, so that's kind of what we want to do. Okay. So, like I said, we're going to attach it from the inside, so make sure that this is facing, the right side is facing outward, and this is the inside of our purse part, and the popcorn stitches are on the outside. Okay, so we're looking at the inside of everything. And then we're going to go to row 18 here, so 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, right here. I'm going to start here, okay, because that's where it measured my 8 inches up from the center here was about at row 18 if I stretched this out which is about 20 centimeters up okay and then we are going to start off you can start anywhere on this piece okay so I'm just gonna start in any single crochet so we're going to go in through this layer and then through this layer okay and then we're gonna hook on our, our yarn okay Pull it through and through and then chain up one okay and then single crochet in there as well so go in both layers yarn over pull through and through and then yarn over and pull through two loops I'm gonna single crochet you could slip stitch you could whip stitch this um, totally up to you but I'm gonna single crochet this so then we're gonna go into this wherever your hook will fit okay so you could go into the rows like this 
and then into this next stitch on this piece yarn over pull through and through yarn over pull through two loops okay go into this next uh, part here and into the stitch on this ring yarn over pull through and through and then yarn over and pull through two loops but like I said you could do slip stitches so you would go in to this layer into this layer yarn over pull through that pull through that and then you would pull through this loop too but I'm gonna actually yarn over and pull through two loops for a single crochet okay and then we want to make sure that we measured this right and counted the stitches on this on this ring here there's mine has 63 single crochets around this ring so I want to make sure that I'm using half of that so it'll be let's see here 62 is an even number right now under 63 so that would be 31 stitches so 31 stitches should get me from here to this center rod right here okay so I'm just going to single crochet across this. It is going to get a little tricky when this uh, ring starts to turn, but don't worry, we are in this, we're going to get through this. <laughs> it's not going to be so difficult, but I just wanted to single crochet on the inside because I didn't want the outside to have like a ridge or anything, so if I turn this around you can see that it actually will look clean it'll look flat okay so it's not gonna look it'll just look like it's sewed or something it won't look like there's a big ridge of single crochets or anything around there so I like that if you wanted to you could single crochet on the outside and have a nice ridge on there um, just do this on the opposite side but I am going to continue to single crochet across this and attach this so this side will have half of the circle, and then the other side will have the other half of the circle, and then we're going to sew up the side of our bag that's extra, because there's this much extra over here. So we got to sew this side then to the opposite side, and I'll show you how to do all of that, no worries, but I'm going to just single crochet across this, just like this, and then I'll meet you up to do the next step. All right, I'm coming. I came back around here, so I'm going to pull this out so I can show you what I ended up doing. So, what I did is I crocheted all the way around here to this middle part, and then I came back up around here to this side. Now, the thing is, the hard part was measuring. I ended up having to take this apart because I um, had to count my rows equal on this panel and on this panel to be equal. And then so this top part will come together. Let me get this out of the way here. This top part will come together like this. Okay, so it'll look like, you can kind of see how half of it's going to look. It looks kind of cool. So um, this is obviously the inside. We're going to turn it back um, inside out. So we're going to continue on though. So just single crochet all the way around this ring, and, or if you had rope or whatever, or your, just your piece. If you just, if you just fastened off with your piece looking like this. You know, you can just single or make sure that this is this way and just single crochet around this piece if you didn't have a ring or a rope or a cord in there. Okay, so now what I want to do is sew these sides up like this. I think I personally am going to whip stitch that. So what I'm going to end up doing is cutting a long strand for sewing. So I'm going to come all the way to the beginning of this round and slip stitch to the beginning single crochet on this ring. So go in, yarn over, pull through, and oops, well, pull through and pull through that loop on your hook, like that, okay? Then we can pull tight, and then I'm going to fasten off here, so I'm going to chain one, and then I'm going to cut my yarn quite long, because I'm going to use that for sewing, and then I'm going to continue pulling that all the way through tight and then I'll use that to whip stitch this up okay so I'm gonna do that right away so let me get my yarn needle and we're going to yarn the needle 
Okay, and then we're going to line these up here. So you want your popcorns to match up and the top of your bag to match up. Okay, and we're just going to go in from one side out the other side. Okay, um, and then just go back around. So I'm going to go from this top to the bottom. Just like that. So I'm just going to whip stitch this all the way up the bag. Um, I, it's just exactly the same uh, steps here. Just going in from one side out the other and then pulling and then going back into the same side and going through and pulling. So I'm just going to sew this up real quick and then I'll meet you up and we'll start with the other side. Alright, so I decided that uh, I came back up and now I'm going to go back down because once, uh, once you come back up, you want to kind of open this up to the outside and you can kind of stretch this out and see that there's um, little holes here and here. So I want to close those so that this is completely closed and it's all just one piece. So that's why I'm coming back down here so you can see this gap here. I just want to close it. So I'm just going to go into this side and out this side. So I'm coming back down and around this piece to sew in. And when I come back down, it's not going to be um, as tight of a, like, because now it's, I'm spacing these out quite far because it's already um, sewn up. So this part is just a little bit of a, a reinforcement kind of round here. So you can see this gap right here. So I just want to go into the stitch, into here, and then pull. Okay, and now I'm ready to fasten this off. Um, I guess there's a little gap here I could close up. Okay, but when you come back down, if you do have your straggler here, you could sew it to that and then tie some knots. That would be okay. Let's do that. Okay, so I'm back to my first straggler here. I'm going to tie some knots. If you don't have your straggler up in here, you could tie some knots to some of these stitches and fasten off that way. But I just tied some knots to that, and then I'm going to cut this yarn and sew in these ends right away. So I just take my yarn needle, put those two on my needle, and just go underneath these stitches. Okay, and I'm gonna come back around here. So they're hidden. So then I'm gonna cut this extra, and that's the inside. All right. So that is one side. You can, you know, test this out. Obviously with this piece right here, uh, you want to be able to close that in. So I'm going to sew that later. I have this little straggler, or I can just take an extra piece of yarn and sew that in later. But I'll show you what this looks like. I'm going to put this right side out. So you can see what one half of our bag looks like. Okay, looking pretty, pretty good so far. So then it's going to come up like this, and this is the side. So we just sewed that up the side. That looks so cool so far. So now we have to make the other side exactly the same. So what I'm going to do is turn this back um, inside out, just like that. Okay, and like I said, um, later I'm going to sew this closed so that this doesn't come out poking out the outside in here, you know, coming outside. So I'm going to sew that closed so that, I'll show you how to do that later, but we're just going to keep this here like that. Grab your other piece, whether you have the one like this with the ring on it or the one like this without a ring, okay? I'm going to obviously use a ring because the other side has a ring on it. And then... We're going to line this up. Remember, uh, make sure that your outside is facing with the bobble or the puff stitches here. Why do I keep calling them bobbles and puffs? They're popcorn stitches, silly. So we're gonna line this up here. 
Okay, and we're gonna just go the same way. So we're gonna count to the 18th row. I am going to start, let's see here, on this side, because I'm right-handed. Okay, so we're gonna count two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. This is row 18 on the body of the bag. And I'm going to line this up with that. I'm going to grab my yarn needle, or my, sorry, crochet hook, go in and in to a stitch, just like that. Then I'm going to pick up some yarn from my yarn ball, wherever that is. Sure, we'll use this. And then hook that on my hook and pull it through. Okay, just like the other side, we are going to chain up one and then single crochet in the same spot. So go back in and into that same stitch. Okay, yarn over and pull through, yarn over and pull through two loops. Okay, so that's secure with a single crochet. Now going into this next spot wherever my hook fits, I'm going to single crochet into the next stitch just like that. So going through both layers, so this is the layer of the bag, and this is the layer of the ring. Yarn over, pull through, and through, and then yarn over and pull through two. Okay, so go in through this layer, in through this stitch on this layer, yarn over, pull through both layers, then yarn over and pull through two. Okay, so I'm going to do 31 stitches on this side, and then I'm going to get to this point here, and then I'm going to do 31 stitches on this side to row 18. If yours is obviously bigger or smaller, you will have to do more or less uh, stitches. Just do the math and the measuring. It's basically on measurements on this part, but I'm going to do this exactly like I did the other side, and then once I'm done with that, I'm going to end up sewing these um, shut so then like you can't see these white pieces poking out. So I'm gonna do that next, but I'll meet you up when I finish sewing or crocheting this piece on. Okay, I just want to interject here at this point. Um, I don't think I showed you how to get past this on the other piece or on the other side. So um, what I am going to do actually is work into this stitch that we uh, single crocheted or stitched around this cord. So I'm gonna go work in one of these. Okay, it really doesn't matter which one, Just I'm just gonna go in the first one here. And then I'm gonna work around this piece, okay, around this cord. Okay, this is for those who have a cord. If you don't have a cord, don't worry about this part. But then yarn over, pull through, and then through that stitch. Okay, and then Pull tight, make sure it's tight, yarn over, and pull through two loops. Okay, so I just worked around this cord, and then we're going to just continue working. Whoopsie. We've got to work through both layers, so now we're working on this other side. So we want to go in here into the next layer, and now we're on the other side. Okay, that's how I kind of went over that cord, but I'm working really tight stitches because I don't want this to fall apart. Um, or have any gapping or openings. So I'm working a tight stitch around this piece. And now I'm just on the other side. So on the other panel and the other side of this ring here. So I'm just gonna work up this like that. And once I come back up around, I'll meet you up and I'll show you what the next step is. All right, this bag is starting to take shape. You can see I just crocheted around this ring here. So now we have to do like the other side and pull this, put this all together, sewing up this side. So what I'm gonna do is fasten this off. So I'm gonna go into the first single crochet of this round right in here. I'm going to insert my hook, yarn over and pull through and through. Oh my goodness, I think I'm twisted. There you go. And then fasten off, so chain one. We're gonna cut the yarn very long because we're gonna use that for sewing. And then pull that all the way through. Pull it tight. Grab the yarn needle. 
and sew this up just like the other side so if you need to uh, know how to sew up this side it ex it's exactly like this other side here so we're just going to sew up and then sew down if there's any gappings or anything weird looking so I'm just gonna line up my stitches here 18 19 20 there we go so line up your puff stitches or popcorn stitches and just whip stitch this up the side like that okay so I'm just gonna do that all the way up and then down and then I'm gonna fasten this off and then I'll show you how to uh, hide these things if you have these wires or rope or something in there at the bottom I'm gonna show you how to hide that all right, I just uh, sewed up this side, sewed in my ends exactly like we did the other side. So now I wanna show you, I sewed up this side of this part here, so I wanna show you how to sew this side um, as well. So let's uh, push this in completely so it is completely hidden. Okay, and then we want to sew this so that it's not poking out, okay? So grab your yarn needle and some extra yarn yarn your needle and then we're gonna go in and out around this piece so I'm gonna go like this and then underneath it like this okay then down under we kind of just want to like whip stitch around this just so that there's tight stitches so that this cord cannot be poked through. Okay, I'm going to try and shove this more so that it is hidden completely. And if you need to cut it a little bit more, no big deal, but there, it should fit. Okay. up in here and then into here nobody's gonna see this this is the inside of the bag so nobody's gonna even see this part okay and then I'll show you how to do it on the outside as well because this might poke out the outside and then 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 we'll have a big problem <laughs> then you might not even want to use a cord or a rope or anything because that will be unflattering so just make a bunch of like whip stitchings like this so that it is completely hidden okay it's not gonna poke out anywhere if you feel like it's gonna poke out somewhere uh, just continue working these whip stitches on these edges here Okay, and again, it doesn't have to look too pretty on the inside because nobody's going to see that. Okay. Then, what we're going to do is turn this uh, right side out. Okay, that's going to be a little difficult because these rings. So you can see here that's going to poke out the outside. Oh my gosh. So we have to sew that closed. So what I'm going to do is go from the inside, take my yarn needle inside right here and poke this out to the outside right about there and then sew this closed on the outside and again this is the bottom of the bag so again nobody's gonna see this really I mean nobody's going to pay much attention down there it's at the bottom you just want to make sure that this cord or your rope or your wire whatever you have in there does not come out and poke you okay so just tie it all in there just like that and then go around a few other stitches to 
to make sure that it is all hidden and just lovely. Okay, once you have it all done, let me do a few more stitches here just to reinforce this and you can kind of see this underneath here. So I'm going to go in here and then I'm going to go back into the bag Okay, and then I'm going to turn this bag inside out like that and then we are going to tie our beginning and end together. So I've trimmed my yarn, yarn, <laughs> trimmed my yarn and tying these two in a knot. Okay, and then taking the yarn needle and sewing in that end. Okay, so I'm just going to do, or I guess you'll have to do the other side. I already did the other side off camera, so make sure you do the other side exactly like this so that that wire or whatever you're using does not poke out and sew in all of your ends. I did also, I sewed in a few more ends that I had left loose. So we're just going to sew those underneath these stitches at the bottom here and then trim any extra. And then once you have both sides sewn in, you kind of want to stretch this out, make sure that you're straight. Okay, then we want to put this right side out. So the, to see our creation and what we've made. This is so exciting. Oh my goodness, look at that. How fabulous. Oh my goodness, this is so much fun. Okay, and then on the inside, I just wanna check and make sure everything looks good, looks good. See this wire kinda is poking out a little bit in there, so I'm going to reinforce that with a more sewing. I'll do that off camera. I'll just do the same steps as just to keep it secure. And then you can manipulate it how you want it, how wide you want it. Make sure your rings are covered. So now we want to make up here, we want to get a button and then a loop. I'm going to close this with a button loop. And then we have to make some straps. But there we have so far. So let's go right into the next step. All right, so I want to start off, um, before I make my handles, I want to sew on this button. So what we're going to do is kind of lay this down. I guess I'll do, turn it around this way. Measure this across here. So it's 10 inches, so five inches will be the center. So that's where I want my button to go. This wooden button I got at the Etsy shop would be fancy. I mentioned that in the beginning of this video, so if you want to get wooden items, wooden supplies, wooden buttons, you can find that shop in the links in the description of this video. But I'm just going to gr grab a scrap piece of yarn, and I'm going to sew on, or yarn my needle here, and then go in from the inside out. And then to the other hole of the button, back in. Okay, and I'm going to do that one more time just to reinforce. Just go in this hole and then out the other hole, just like that. Okay, and then I'm going to turn this inside like this. And I'm going to tie this in a knot. Nobody's going to see that. Tie it tight. I just use the yarn um, that's the same kind of yarn for my bag. You could use thread or something else, but I'm just sewing this on with my yarn. And then I'm going to sew in these ends. Okay, so I'm just going to go into a couple of stitches this way, and then into a couple of stitches this way. And then cut any extra 
stretch it out, and that's attached. So now we have to put a loop on the other side to kind of go around this. So that's going to be super small, super simple. So what I'm going to do is actually just attach it right to the purse. And I'm going to grab my yarn and my hook. Here we go. And I'm going to, again, measure, we said t this was 10 inches, so I'm going to measure this halfway point. So right here is my halfway point. So this stitch right back here on this layer, I'm going to go in, let's do this stitch right here. Okay, I'm going to attach my yarn on my hook, pull it through, and then I'm going to chain up a, a few. I'll do 10 first. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. I'm going to pull this up I'm going to test this out, and that seems like that is big enough. So I chain 10. You may have to chain more depending on your, um, your button size. So what I did is just wrap this around, and then you want to kind of make sure that it does slip over your uh, button so that it could easily be removed and put back on, okay? So I just chained 10, and so I'm going to go back down into, I'm going to skip this stitch and go into this next stitch here. And then yarn over, pull through and through for a slip stitch. Like that. And then to fasten off, I like to chain one, cut this yarn, pull it all the way through, pull tight, and now what I'm going to do, since I have this straggler and this straggler, I am going to sew this straggler through my stitches to this other side where this straggler is. Okay, so now they're together. And then I'm going to tie those in a knot. Okay, that's just my personal thing. You don't have to do that. That's like a creator's, creator's choice kind of thing. Okay. And then I'm going to sew in these ends. So again, yarn the needle. And then sew underneath some of these stitches. Stretch it out. And then cut any extra. And there you have it. So now we have our little loop just like that. So cute! Awesome! So now let's make our handles. I'm just going to get right into it. I have this um, cord I'm going to use. You can use a rope or a cord or anything that you want. and um, Or you don't have to use anything. But I'm going to show you how to do this. It's basically, if you've ever yarn bombed something, we're going to yarn bomb this cord. <laughs> so we're going to start off with a slip knot. So put your short end over your long end, fold this down, and pull this through. Put your hook in. And now I'm going to chain five. Um, you can chain however many you need to to wrap around the cord. Okay, so I'm going to chain five. One, two, three four and five okay and then I'm going to come I'm going to turn this over okay so we're watch what I'm doing here turning this flipping this okay then we are going to work we're going to work in a continuous circ, uh, spiral okay we're going to go into this first chain right here and we're going to create a single crochet, okay? So not a slip stitch. We're going to yarn over and pull through, and then yarn over and pull through two loops. Okay, just like that. So we're single crocheting all the way around. So that should be five stitches. So one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, so you saw I just went through one loop on those. Now what I'm going to do is hold, pull this up, 
I'm going to put my cord in, okay, this cable here that I have. We're going to put it in over the top of it. And then we're going to continue working around this piece, okay? So we're going to crochet around it with the, um, with the cord in it, if that makes sense. I'll show you what I mean. If I can get this on here. Oh my goodness. There we go. Okay. So it's on. So now what I'm going to do is work in the back loops only. Okay. So you can see here, where's my yarn needle? I just had it. Oh, here it is. So we usually work through both loops like this. And you can, you can definitely work through both loops. Okay, front and back, front and back. But what I'm going to do for this whole um, strap is work through the back loops only. Just these loops like this. On all five stitches, all the way around. And I'm going to continue this for 36 rounds. So if you need to, grab a stitch marker. I don't really have one available. Let me cut this. Okay, so a stitch marker in there. Okay, and then we're going to go into the front loop of this one, yarn over and pull through, yarn over and pull through two loops. Okay, and then we're just going to continue working around, single crocheting, until your strap is as big as you want. I think 36 rounds for me is going to get me to be 12 inches. That'll be a 12 inch strap, that'll be 6 inches on each side because we're going to fold these in half for the strap. So I think 12 inches, a 12 inch strap is a, a pretty decent strap. You can make yours bigger or smaller. It does not matter at all. Just single crochet around this just like that. Okay. Like I said though, you could use you could use a cord or a cable like I'm using. This is like wire, like a corded nice cord wire. Uh, you could use just regular wire. You could use a piece of wood, like a, you could cut a ring in half and use um, half of the ring, a wooden ring. You could use a rope. Um, you could use bulky yarn or you don't have to use anything. You could stuff this with polyfill as you go, just a little bit of polyfill, it'll be a little squishy handle. Um, or you don't have to have anything. Or you don't even have to copy this type of handle. You could have a flat handle. You could, you know, find a different bag online, a free pattern for, for another bag. If you like the straps of one bag, you can make a, straps from a different bag or something, you know, flat handles or whatever. So, but I'm just going to continue working around here, counting my rows and making sure that this is nice and tight and then I'm gonna finish what did I say 36 rows of this and then I'll meet you up once I have my 36 rows done and we will fasten this off all right so I have my 36 rows so I kind of um, tested this so I kind of curved it a little bit but you can see here this is what it should look like so now uh, is where all of this is coming together. We're going to slip stitch into the very next stitch. I'm going to go under both loops, okay? Both loops, front and back. There we go. Yarn over, oops, I caught on something there. Yarn over, pull through, and pull through. And now fasten off, and I'm going to fasten off with a longer tail because we're going to sew this closed so that this end is hidden. So I'm going to cut off longer tail, pull it all the way through, pull tight. Now we want to do our measuring. So this measures, let me straighten this out here. Okay, this measures, let's stretch it out, 12 inches for me, oops, maybe 11 and a half, okay. So what I'm going to do is mark where my cord needs to be cut off, and then I'm going to cut this before I close the ends. 
Okay, just be careful when you're cutting. And don't cut your yarn. <laughs> Okay, so now this end is closed, so or cut, so I'm going to close this end. So I'm going to take my yarn needle, yarn my needle, and then we're just going to whip stitch this end closed. So bye-bye cord. That way it's not going to poke out anywhere or hurt anybody. But I'm going to leave that. I'm going to use this straggler to sew it onto the bag. So now I'm going to do the other side here. So you can see where I marked it right there. So I'm going to cut this. Oh my goodness. There we go. Wires everywhere. Just be careful when you if you are using a cable or something or a wire. And then we're just going to do that to the other side. So we have our beginning straggler from when we tied our um, slip knot. So I'm just going to sew this end closed with a whip stitch just like the other side. Okay, so that's closed as well. Awesome. Now I'm going to use this to sew it onto the bag. Okay. So we're going to curve this just like so. We're going to come to our bag here and again make your measurements. So we, we said it was about 10 inches which is about 27, 26 centimeters. Okay so we're gonna come to here and I think this third inch we're gonna do like three inches in. So inch three and inch eight. You can mark those stitches if you'd like. So I'll do the front Okay, so you can mark your stitch here, just put your hook in, grab a new piece of yarn, hook that through like that, and then go to inch seven here. So one, two, three inches in. I think I maybe said eight inches, eight, inch eight. That would be lopsided. So go to inch seven, or if yours measures bigger or smaller, just make sure it's equal on both sides. So then I'm going to mark this stitch with a different piece of yarn. Okay, and those are the spots where I want my uh, handle to be attached to. So what we're going to do is take our yarn needle. We're going to go through this first um, first loop or first layer here. Okay, and then we are going to go just whip stitch it around. Okay, so I'm just going to attach it on the inside. Okay, and I'm just going to go around the area where um, this stitch is marked. Okay, so I'm just going to whip stitch going in and out of both layers. Okay, it's a very simple attachment method. Um, you can attach how you would like. I'm going to attach it more on the inside though so that you can, it's uh, closed, or you wouldn't see the ends of my strap here. And I'm going to end up removing that stitch marker. And just make sure you go through this one layer because we're putting a handle on the other layer as well. Okay, so I'm just going to continue working that. And then I'm going to do the other side and let's, when you're ready to fasten off, my, my string or my yarn is getting a little bit short. So let me fasten this off. Here. I might reinforce it later with an extra piece of yarn. We're going to go on this side, go underneath a few stitches. Okay, hold that loop. Okay, and then put it inside of there. 
I know my, my uh, yarn is getting really short here, but uh, if you have a longer yarn, you can obviously go through that loop, pull it really tight, and then tie a few knots. Okay, so again, go underneath a couple of these stitches, hook that through, you can sew in this end and hide it. I'm just going to go back up. Yeah, it doesn't help when, you're, when your strand of yarn, your straggler here, is really short, but, well, if you whatever you have to work with, I guess, right? So now we're going to do the other side, okay, where this other stitch marker is marked. You want to make sure that your handle looks like that. Okay, so I'm just going to sew this one in exactly how I did the other one. Luckily, my strand is a little longer. I'm going to go on the inside here, around the area where this is marked, go in through a few stitches. Okay, you can um, make yours uh, like attached on the outside, the inside, up at the very top. Totally up to you. This is, again, creator's choice on these steps here. So I'm just going to attach this handle and then I'm going to do the same exact thing, measuring and attaching and making another handle and attaching it to the back side of my purse exactly the same way that I'm doing this. Okay, so do that and then I'll meet you up when both handles are attached. Okay, so um, when I, I just want to interject again, uh, when I was making the other handle, I was having some ideas and um, I think the better, I did a better way to attach the handle. So like I said, you could attach it, you know, measuring and everything, but maybe counting your stitches on each end, so there's like eight stitches on one side and eight stitches on the other side, then you can attach it at that point. That way you know it's going to be equal instead of measuring. Also, the other idea was to go lower into the bag, okay, where you see how this part is about an inch wide or an inch and a half wide, maybe going down into the bag where that starts, where that um, single crochet rows start, and then attaching it down there, and then attaching it also up the side here, okay? That way maybe it will have some more reinforcement, more uh, sturdier bag, so you can put heavier things in your bag. So that's just an idea I had, so I'm going to show you how I did that. So I, I just repeated exactly how I was um, crocheting around the tube, or around the uh, cord that I had. And then I closed the ends, so now I have it like this. So now, going on the other side, where we want to attach, I'm going to count my stitches. So on the front, I had eight stitches on each side. So going from this side, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then that is where I'm going to attach this one. And I'm going to put it down into the bag about an inch, okay? And then I'm going to attach it that way. I found, I personally just found that to be a little bit more uh, sturdy, a little bit more reinforcement and because uh, when I sewed it on to the very top how I just showed you I kind of had a little bit of trouble um, with the stitching at the top kind of pulling up and it was like really wonky and not straight and I did not like that at all so that's just again personal preference so now I'm just go sewing this in uh, just like I did though like just a whip stitch around and around and then I went up um, the side of the cord as well and I'll show you how to do that on this side and then I'll do the other side off camera but then so see how this is kind of uh, open here so I'm going to attach this to here okay so how I did that I went up the side let me turn this don't be afraid to like manipulate your yarn so you can see you know where you need to go but I just went into the tube or into, I say tube because it kind of is like a tube, and then out this side, then back in, and into the tube, and then out the top of the bag, just like that. And then we go back down. So I'm going to go down in. and down to the bottom. 
And then, oh, my yarn is coming off my needle here. Then I need to tie some knots. So I'm going to go in a few stitches, keep this loop up, go around the loop, and then pull it tight. Just like that. And then I might do another one. You could do two or three or however you many you feel will be safe for the weight that is going to be in the bag. I'm just going to do two. And then I'm just going to sew in this end up the strap. Just like that. And then cut off any loose ends. Stretch it out. And there it is. Okay, so now I'm just going to do the same exact thing to this side, so count eight stitches in, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right here. It should line up with the opposite side as well. I'm going to go down in about an inch right there, and then I'm going to sew this on. So I'm going to do that, and then I'll meet you up, and we will add an embellishment. All right, so there is the bag. I have the both the handles attached, and it looks fabulous. Now, you could end it here. Um, here's my little button thing. There we go. So now that's how the handles are on the inside of the bag. And you could end here, like I said, but you could follow along, and we're going to make a little embellishment. Um, we're going to make a tassel. So let me set this aside and grab, um, I'm going to grab some variated yarn, okay, and uh, my main color of my bag yarn. And then uh, what, there's an accent color, this purpley color in the variegated yarn, so I'm going to grab that uh, purpley accent color. Okay, so if you want to make a tassel, have three different colors, um, your main color, a variegated color, and an accent color. Okay, and then what we're going to do is grab our measure tape. We are going to take our main color and grab 15 inches of yarn like this, 15 inches. Okay, and then we're going to fold this in half and kind of just make a bunch of strands, okay, because this is going to be our tassel. So I'm going to make, um, let's see here, two, four, six, eight, ten, there'll be two, because we're going to fold it in half, so that's ten strands, Tw uh, twelve, <laughs> fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, 24, 26, 28, and 30, okay? So I'm going to have 30 strands in my tassel, okay? You, the more, the better. The more strands you have, the thicker um, your tassel will be. So now hold this tight, okay? I just cut that strand, so now we're going to hold this. We're going to grab our variegated color here. Okay, we're going to go, um, you can see the halfway point is about right here. We're going to go about to here. And you can see on this side is where um, the, the length of your tassel will be. Okay, so if you want your tassels to be longer, you can obviously go more this way. Okay, but I'm going to pinch it where I want to start. And then I'm going to put my yarn over the top of it, my variegated color, okay, over the top of it. I'm going to wrap that underneath, okay, and then I'm going to tie this in a knot. If you have a family member or friend to help you uh, tie this knot, that is better. Or you can do it alone. I'm trying to figure this out myself here. So we want to tie it just in a one loop knot, okay? So I just cross those over and tie it tight. Now I'm going to lay this one down and I'm going to wrap around this okay so don't tie a knot knot just tie it once okay and then we're going to just continue to wrap this around okay so I'm just going to wrap this until I feel uh, that it is equal on both sides so obviously where I tied this this side is shorter than this side so I want to tie it around and around just keep wrapping 
Okay, make a wrap of yarn. And then once I wrap it until I get to where I want it to be, I will show you what the next step needs to be. Alright, once you wrap it as much as you want it to be, I think this is a good amount right here, uh, you can fold this in half to see how it's going to look. Okay, just like that. Okay, and then we'll cut our tassels obviously later. But uh, what we want to do now is cut this yarn short. Okay, and then we're going to pinch this in half like I just showed you, like this. Okay, we're going to keep this uh, straggler here. And we're going to pull it down. Kind of like that. We're going to hide that around. We're going to take our contrast color. Okay, so I have purple here. We're going to wrap that around. Okay, again, if you have, you know, a family member or a friend to help, that's awesome. But we're going to tie this in a knot. Or not a knot, but a one time loop. Pull through and tie off. Okay, and you want to tie it super duper tight. Okay, like crazy tight. Just like that. Okay. Now, I'm going to wrap the straggler side, the short end here, I'm going to cut this a little shorter, cut this and then wrap it once, okay, and put it in the back, okay, so this is going to be the front of my tassel, and then I'm going to take the yarn that's attached to my ball of yarn, and I'm going to wrap this part so that everything gets tight in there and hidden. Okay, and then I'm going to wrap down this tassel a few times. Okay, and all along I'm wrapping these two stragglers as well. Okay. Because we'll cut those short later. And you won't have to worry about this falling apart. Okay, and you can see your beginning uh, straggler here. Okay, so once you get to the point where you're ready to fasten this off, which I think I am, I'm going to go to the back of my tassel. I'm going to take the beginning straggler from this contrast color, and I'm going to tie these two in a knot. Well, not a knot, but one loop knot. So just cross them over. and then tie those once in the back. Pull tight. Now we need our yarn needle. We are going to yarn these two stragglers onto the needle. And then we're going to sew this up into this tassel. Now some people I know who use glue to reinforce theirs. That's fine, you could use glue. Just put a little dab of glue on the back of your tassel where you fastened off. But I'm going to pull this through. And then I'm going to cut that. Okay, and then you can even stretch it out, kind of hide it behind there. And then this straggler here from when we wrapped this upper part is still hanging down here, so I want to cut that really short too. Okay, so that's underneath there as well. So now we want to cut our tassel, so we have the top part done. So now you want to turn this upside down, find a good length for your tassels. So I'm just going to kind of stretch this out. I think that's a pretty good length. And then just like a hair cutter, cut across. But be careful with your scissor. Don't want to cut yourself or stab yourself or anything. So, And if you're doing this with kids, make sure you have adult supervision. Okay. And there it is.
is. A cute little tassel. So now I want to attach this to my bag somehow. I think I want it on the strap over here. So how am I going to get that on the strap? Well, I have to chain a little loop and then I'm going to attach it. So I think I'm going to use my contrast color. I think I like that purple. So I'm going to grab my hook, make a slip knot. I've shown that to you a few times in this uh, video already. Get all this scrap. It's a messy project. Set all that aside. And then we're just going to chain. I'm going to chain about, I'll say, 15 at first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. And then I'm going to grab my bag. I'm going to grab around the strap. Okay. Make sure that that's big enough. And then I'm going to grab my tassel, put that through the tassel, okay, and the beginning of my chain. So then it's going to be attached like that, and it's going to hang down like that. I think that's a good enough, uh, a good amount of chains. So I'm going to fasten that off. If you want to make it longer, you totally can. Uh, just uh, continue chaining until you are ready to fasten off. And then what we're going to do is actually attach it right away. Um, so like I showed you, put your tassel up there. Wrap this around your handbag handle. Then put this through the tassel from the back and then we're going to slip stitch to the first chain right here so you can go into the chain then yarn over and pull through and through and then to fasten off I like to chain one and cut this yarn pull it all the way through pull tight you can take these two straggler ends and tie a knot Okay, and then we can sew in these ends to hide them. So all we've got to do is just yarn our needle. And then you can just go in to this side, out this side, wrap it around, wherever it fits. Just sew in this end, cut any extra. And we can hide that inside, so turn that around so nobody can see that. Okay, you could even, you know, pin this down on the inside of your uh, handle like that. And then you kind of want to, you might want to wet your, if, you're, if your tassel is like this, kind of wavy, you can wet your yarn to kind of make it straighten out. But there you have it. Our beautiful handbag is complete! I'm so excited about this. This looks so awesome. It's perfect for a skein of yarn or makeup or just a cute little purse. You know what I also thought is that you could put a pocket on the inside. So right in here, in this section here, you could put a little pocket for like your cell phone or something. I might do that too off camera. Just make a little square and sew it on the inside. But there it is! Thank you so much for watching and learning how to make this beautiful bag. Make sure to share your photos on the Facebook. If you make this, I need to see it. It is so beautiful. I love how this all turned out. I am so excited. I'm going to use this all weekend. <laughs> it's going to be fabulous. It's going to match my outfit, everything. So thanks again for watching. Make sure to check out those links in the description of this video. I'll have the written pattern on my website, yarnutopia.com, and I will have all the information you need about this bag, how much yarn, the sizing, all that good information on the blog. 
Also, uh, make sure to hashtag three six or sorry hashtag yarn utopia. I was gonna say three sixty five days of granny squares. If you want to do the granny squares, follow my blog and you'll get the squares patterns as well. But hashtag yarn utopia in this photo so I can see it online on uh, Instagram. And also follow me on Snapchat, all that good stuff. And have a great rest of your day, great weekend, and thanks for watching. Happy hooking.